Hey everybody, Jake here for Dude Ranch DIY. Welcome back to the channel. I just got back from the Paul Bunyan show mere minutes ago and I'm already down here in the wood yard. I just hooked up the Super Duty truck to the Sure Track dump trailer and brought down the Kubota L3901 tractor because we have a firewood delivery to go do this afternoon. Um, if you didn't see the video on the Paul Bunyan show, the ending, Chris and I discussed that we had a little bit of a hard time getting back home, but we're finally back home, albeit a day late. Um, so I need to get this firewood delivery done because it was supposed to be done yesterday. Um, so we're going to be delivering two small IBC totes, the 275 gallon IBC totes to this customer. They've been a customer for the past two years. So this is gonna be their third year ordering from me. And um, they must like my wood, I suppose. So I'm gonna pull the truck and trailer out. We're gonna bring it down the wood yard road here and we're going to get those two totes loaded up one two three hope you guys enjoy well guys i got these new decals here for the truck and the trailer and the dump truck um so finally i'm getting around to putting them on here i figured now is good a time as ever just to let people know what's going on here I got two on the Super Duty so far. This is the first one going on. Dump trailer. I might I might put more up on the front, like on the sides, um, but figure one on the back for now. Be good enough. All right, guys. So the two totes we're gonna be loading up today are this one right here, which is full of all ash. And then we're gonna skip these four because these four are actually all oak and it's been about a year since I split them, but definitely not a full two years. So I wanna give them a little bit more time to season out. Um, but this one is some maple. It's, it looks like mostly maple and maybe a little bit of cherry as well. So these are the two small totes we're gonna to take. We're gonna leave these four in the middle of the oak, give them some more time to dry. And those are the two we're gonna load up. So let's head on down to the tractor and get them loaded up. Now when I open up the doors here, there's a little bit of water and there's some, you know, leaves and sticks and stuff from the last time I used the trailer, uh, bringing back all that cherry. So I'm just going to raise it up a bit, kind of rake it out. I don't want all that garbage and stuff to be dumped with the firewood at the customer's house. So I'll dump it out here. We'll deal with that later. For any of you guys with dump trailers or dump trucks for that matter or anything, you know, body on it. It's real important to keep those corners clean. That's where everything, you know, packs in, especially if you're blowing chips and filling it up with dirt and stuff. That's where everything packs in. You know, you tend to overlook it because you just want to use the, the equipment, but uh, that's how everything rusts out prematurely. So always try and, you know, if you've got a rake or a shovel, get in there and get all that stuff out of the corners. All right, that's better.
jumping these. Um, I no longer use the chains if you guys have been watching the channel for a while. Um, I found that the chains kind of cause you to rattle the, the, the cage around unnecessarily and cause damage to the IBC tote. So instead, what you'll see me do is I pick them up and I kind of bring them in at the edge of the trailer on an angle and I have that front edge tip down first and apply pressure on it. As soon as that front edge hits, I raise up my front end loader and I start tilting forward simultaneously. And I basically lay the tote down on the front part that's cut out here. Once it's down, the bottom of the cage, those bars on the bottom usually are up about a half an inch or so just enough that way I can slip my forks down underneath the entire tote and pick up. I like to pick up usually in between that spot where the, the, first, the first rung and the actual floor of the cage meet. That in between, if I get my forks in there, it gives me, it allows me enough height to clear my back log arch here and I can lift the whole tote up and everything usually falls out pretty smoothly like you just saw on that first one. So I'm gonna try and do this second one as smoothly as that first one went. Let's see how it goes. That's how you load IBC totes of ready to burn firewood into a dump trailer. Two totes loaded, only one piece down on the ground. No need to shake the totes to get that last bit out. Um, where the cage is cut in the front, you just simply lay them over onto their side and pick them straight up and all that wood falls right out. No need to cut the cage all the way down to the floor and lose all your structural rigidity because then you'll find after you do that the cage starts bowing out. Just simply lay it over, flip it over and pick it all the way straight up and you'll be golden. If I didn't have this log arch on the back, it would be even easier because I wouldn't be maxed out on my height as far as my pallet forks and everything hitting on this cage. Um, also, with the added height of this dump trailer, my SureTrack dump trailer, the deck height is roughly about 29 inches if it's on level ground, um, which you know essentially takes away 29 inches of my lifting capabilities. It's actually, I find, a little bit easier to load the firewood into the dumpster can of the International Hook Lift truck, just because that six, sits about six inches up off the ground. So I you know, gain essentially that 23 inches of, of height that I otherwise would lose loading into this dump trailer. However, for the firewood delivery that we're doing today, um, it's only two face, face cords or two totes, so no need to really use the, the big dumpster can. Um, it's windy back roads that I take to get there, so it's just a little bit more comfortable doing it in the pickup truck where I don't have to shift gears and uh, you know go through all those, those paces. Um, the dump trailer works really well for firewood deliveries. It's how I started out. Um, now I'm a little bit spoiled with the International Hook Lift truck just because it's a much shorter, smaller package, but uh, you know for certain deliveries, the dump trailer works just fine too.
For those of you wondering what it looks like in the dump trailer, this is what two small IBC totes looks like. You can basically see, there's the first one, there's the second one. Usually when I have a full cord in here, the trailer is usually filled up, um, kind of sloping down towards the front and sloping down towards the back all the way um, with it nice and level up in the middle, right up until the uh, wood boards there. Um, that'll be roughly a, a full cord. Um, and then two full cords would be essentially double that, basically fully level all the way across the top of the wood boards here. Um, you know, I take that back. It's, it's usually not like sloping down. It, it's, pretty, it's pretty well full. It might slope down maybe like a third of the way down that, that front metal side, but definitely not all the way down to the shackle there uh, for one, one full cord. Um, it kind of tapers off just a little bit, maybe to like right there, but it's pretty much full all the way across. Um, I've done the measurements and that's roughly about 190 cubic feet, which is the going rate for a loosely thrown in cord, um, you know, into a dump truck or a dump trailer. So that's what it looks like. Let's go deliver it. we are in the truck we just fueled up and I'm, I am happy to say fuel prices have definitely been coming down over the past couple of weeks I mean I still paid 505 a gallon for diesel um, I had about a quarter tank and it took $94 to fill me up um, but that led me to thinking about how I've changed my pricing and while I'm not going to divulge exactly how much I charge because I feel like that's you know kind of a personal thing. Um, I will say that I used to include a small delivery fee bundled, you know, built into the price of the firewood. And that basically covered delivery within 10 miles. So, you know, as far as going 10 miles out and 10 miles back, so about 20 mile round trip. This delivery in particular um, is 24 miles away, one way. Um, so I'm basically doing, you know, just shy of 50 miles, 48 miles, um, door to door and with diesel the way that it is and, you know, just everything the way that it is, I have now implemented a, what I, you know, deem to be pretty fair, uh, delivery fee for, you know, incrementally. So if you're, you know, in that 10 mile, it, it's built into the price of the, the baskets or the IBC totes. If you're in that 10 to 20 mile range, then it's a certain price. If you're in 20 to 30 mile, it's, you know, a, a different delivery fee is associated, um, you know, with that delivery, all based on, you know, the, the radiuses of, of going out farther and farther. Um, and I think, you know, nobody so far has complained about it. I've definitely gotten plenty of inquiries where people reach out and they're asking how much a cord of firewood is. And I tell them, well, I'll sell you a cord, but I don't sell it by the cord. I sell it by the basket. And I have large baskets and I have small baskets. These are the prices for a large basket. These are the prices for a small basket. Um, I generally say that, you know, three of either will either get you a little bit less than a full cord if you get three small ones, or if you get three big ones, it's gonna be a little bit more than a cord. Or we could do any combination there in between, you know, two smalls and a large, two larges and a small. Um, however they want to work it based on how much wood they want, but I'm trying to be fair by not selling by the cord because I use these baskets and people don't really seem to mind. Um, those that are offset, you know, by my prices or, or thrown off by my prices, that's fine because if I sell out all my firewood right away, be, that, you know, that means that my prices are too low. I would rather still have firewood in the middle of January and be able to sell it for a higher price just wait a little bit longer to sell it rather than sell it all up front for you know really cheap prices and and I think that shows that my prices are fair because not everybody is just jumping at it and um, you know I'm certainly getting plenty of business um, otherwise from people that are willing to pay my higher prices because they understand that everything's more expensive I'm offering a really nice quality product it, uh, you know, I show up on time when I say I'm going to. I usually can get there within a day or two of them calling. 
and um, that's what I'm trying to build my business on. So just thought I'd divulge that information for you. Um, take it or leave it. You know, I know everybody has different prices in different areas, and that's another reason why I'm not really saying exactly how much I charge for my wood, because it really depends on so many different factors. Um, you know, what type of equipment you have and how far you're willing to drive and the area in which you live. So next thing in about 28 minutes, we'll show up at the delivery and I'll show you the dump. But in the meantime, I'm going to take some clips of some really nice fall foliage because while Chris and I were away at the Paul Bunyan show, everything seems to be kind of popping. Guys, we are back in the wood yard. As you can see, I just unhooked the dump trailer. I'm going to be using the tractor to move it in place, the end of the splitter, and we're going to be cutting up a bunch of that cherry wood that I got over at my neighbor's house a couple videos back. But before we wrap up this video, as I said in the beginning, I literally just got back from the Paul Bunyan show a couple hours ago, earlier today, and while I was there, I met a bunch of great YouTube channels. Um, you'll probably recognize most of them. And while we were there, we got to exchange a bunch of stickers. So while I don't put stickers on my splitter, I do have a bunch of stickers on the lid of my toolbox. I've always liked doing that. That way when you open it up, it's just like a whole, uh, you know, wall of stickers. So that's where I'm gonna be putting these stickers. So let's go open up the toolbox. I'll show you what stickers I got on there already and the ones I'm gonna be adding. All right, guys, so here we are up in the back of the truck. Let me open up toolbox. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of stickers already down going on here. Um, so the first one I got was from Matt, Firewood on the Hill. It was nice meeting you and your wife, Matt. Thank you very much for the sticker. And I'm gonna be putting this one right here. All right, that one's on there good. The next one, everybody knows this guy. Outside with Scheib, finally got one of his stickers. So this one will go right next to Firewood on the Hill.
All right. Followed by Brad over at Firewood at the Furnace. This is his new sticker. Honored to have the new design. This one's pretty cool with the uh, chainsaw wheeled in American Eagle here. The last sticker we got here is from Old Guy Firewood, Dick. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking with you at the uh, live stream on Friday night at the Fairfield Inn. Um, this is a pretty cool sticker, so we're going to throw it on here next to Firewood at the Furnace. All right. And last but not least, it's not a sticker, but uh, I was talking with Chris from In the Woodyard, and I gave him one of my stickers. He said he didn't have any stickers, but he had one of these. Um, it was the last one he had, so I'm honored to get this. Thank you, Chris. I might have to uh, drill a hole in this or something and make it like a, a keychain for the log splitter. But uh, this, this is pretty cool, that's for sure. I forgot one last one. It slipped off to the side. This is the Hogs Logs from Bellevue, Ohio. I met this gentleman uh, walking around the Paul Bunyan show. He was very nice. I, I do forget your name. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I do remember you said you're working on getting a YouTube channel going. Um, as of right now, you're only on Instagram. I just checked out your Instagram account, and it looks like you got some pretty cool machinery, um, as well as a nice uh, Amish-built bundler. So I'm going to be looking forward to when you come out with a YouTube channel. Until then, I'll, I just followed you on Instagram. So I'm going to put this one on here next to... Old Guy Firewood. All right. Don't want to leave anybody out. Um, if any of you guys have stickers and you have channels, you know, or stickers for your channels, I should say, and you want to send them over to me, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I have, uh, you know, some more space on the toolbox and plenty of other places to put stickers. So if you got a sticker and, uh, you know, you'd like to swap, I can send you one of mine. You can send me one of yours. So, guys, that's going to wrap up this afternoon's video. We're going to keep it short because I'm pretty tired from all the traveling and everything. Uh, getting home from the Paul Bunyan show. Again, we had a great time. Thank you to all the guys and fans that I met out at the show. Um, it was really awesome getting to meet all you guys. I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight into my thinking behind, uh, you know, how I do my firewood deliveries and sales, um, you know, and maybe that can help you out a little bit when you're thinking about how to do your pricing. As I said, it's very individualized based on, you know, what equipment you have, um, how far you're traveling, what type of area you're in and stuff like that. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to, you know, try and give you a little bit of insight down in the comment section below. But other than that, if you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.